Good morning to you all. You are welcome to Sunday School. Uh, we continue our Sunday School this morning as we sing from uh, the Collected Gospel Song 93, CGS 93. We shall render all um, the first and second standard, city, standard three. We all will rise to sing. Thereafter, we'll be led in an opening prayer. CGS 93. <laughs> Father, Lord, we thank you for bringing us to your house this morning. Lord, accept our thanks. Amen. Lord, we have come, O oh Lord, to study at their feet. Lord Jesus, you are the teacher of all teachers. Please come down this morning, Amen. teach our hearts, Amen. make us doers of your words, Amen. and not hearers alone. Amen. Those on their ways, hasten up their steps, Amen. and those following us virtually, Lord, please touch them, O oh Lord. Amen. Bless every one of us mightily teach us your words bless us mightily so much more that at the end of our race on earth we will all reign with you in heaven thank you for your answer for we pray in jesus name
Once again, you are welcome to Sunday School um, at the tune of the organ uh, or the uh, piano. We will all go down. The junior will please move to their class while the rest of us will please close the ranks and the teacher will come down to teach us. It is my earnest prayer that God will come down this morning, bless us with his word and make us to be richly blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. I can see we're all happy. Good morning, class. Good morning, class. And a happy Sunday to all of us. We pray that the Lord of Sunday, um, the Lord of the Lord's Day, we bless all of us Amen. with this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, before we go into uh, our lesson and what we have Today, can somebody remind us what we are studying about? What was the title of our study? Thank you, sir. The first king. Thank you. God bless you, sir. The first king. The first king. Yeah, before we go uh, into the lesson, we want to all recite um, the key verse together. At the count of two, one, two, go. For promotion cometh neither from the, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Psalm 75, verse six, God bless all of us in Jesus' name. Now, we we'll quickly want to look at what we want to achieve in this um, study or in this Sunday school. Uh, we, as you know, students or we who are going to be learning this lesson, we want to be able to you know, describe the attitudes of humility and obedience toward God, which are the two prerequisites for spiritual success. So let's put that in mind as we go through this lesson. We are looking at two things, humility and obedience towards God. And he's saying they are, you know, two prerequisites for spiritual success. And also... Um, in this lesson as well, we want to realize that promotion comes from the Lord. Promotion comes from the Lord. May the Lord God Almighty, uh, as we study this lesson, promote all of us Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe all of us want to be promoted. That's why this lesson is coming. May God Lord come and help us. We've got some activity to do, just as we did last time, uh, which is going to be shown on the screen. That's the first thing we are going to do. 
We just have a little test to read on that. We we'll perform the activity, then we we'll go back to our test, uh, which will uh, lead us into uh, the main lesson. So uh, the AV will help us to project the activity. Why they are helping us with that? I want this time around. I would like, just as we did the other day, somebody to represent this group. If you have a phone, I would like to represent this group that has an internet connection. Can you just come out to the front for us to represent this group, please? Anybody? Thank you, Daniel. God bless you. Yeah, somebody to represent this group. If you feel you want to join him and make two, that's okay. To, to be a group work and represent you know, that, that, that column. That's fine. Then we want somebody quickly in this column. Anybody? It's just a simple exercise. Anybody can come out to join. Thank you, sir. God bless you. So you scan that code and you put, this is group one. Dane, you put group one. Have you put your name? You have, you can delete, just put, oh, that's fine, that's okay. Then you, you are representing that group. So anything you are doing will be for that group. You can as well push your name, sir, and we want somebody from the last group, the last column. Please, somebody should come out. Choose a leader, please. Remember, today we are learning about a king. So, We are not saying you should behave like the, the lesson, but just choose somebody to come. No, don't be afraid, sir. Just come to the front. <laughs> anyway, it's just, you know, something to just, yeah, yeah, you put group two, that's fine. So that's going to represent group two. Daniel, when you see Daniel, you know he's representing group one. Then, sir, you scan that code and uh, you put either your name or you're representing group three, and the AV, yeah, we. So the rule of the game is you make sure you choose the right answer and make sure you're fast as, be fast as, you know, as you can so that somebody is not ahead of you. So let's quickly, uh, before we do that, um, that's supposed to be the title. Can somebody open to St. Matthew chapter 18 for us? Is that what we have on the title? Yeah. Anybody, Matthew 18? Yeah, take from one. Matthew chapter 18, from verse 1. Should I read? 18. One. At the same time came the disciples unto Please, him. let's have your mic, please. God bless Hello. you. Hello. Yeah. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Two. And Jesus ca called the little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Three. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Four. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Five. And whoso shall receive one such little child in, in my name, receiveth me. Thank you. That's okay. So having read that, we should be able to uh, go along with the game. So thank you, Evie. You can start for us. So now, read the question. We've already read that. So who ruled the children of Israel before the kings? Choose your answer. You will see the color code on your phone. And choose as fast as you can. All right, next. Next, please. All right, thank you. Next. Give two words for humility found in Saul. Thank 
Thank you. Next. Luke 1, still living. Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Next. Thank you. One is still on top. Can you live in disobedience and get God's blessings? You have to be fast as you can. Oh. Whosoever shall humble himself shall be promoted. Can someone say he is humble and live in disobedience? Next, somebody else choosing that answer. See on top, where does true promotion come from? Hard work, God, the leader, the people. Wow. Because of Samuel's son's misbehaviors, and his old age, it is better for the people to quickly, you know, ask God for a king. Next, you have to be fast as you can. And nine of ten, why is it important to do the will of God? God's requirement to make us have peace of mind. Next, please. Next, that should be the last one. Obedience to the word, to, to the word of God, <laughs> and humility go hand in hand. Thank you. Let's see what we have. Let's see on top. Oh, God bless all of us. Thank you very much. I will have said we should clap for ourselves, but God is already clapping for us. May, may God bless all of us. Anyway, it's just, you know, an opener to our lesson that makes us, you know, to think about what we are going to be studying. Can so when you go to 1 Samuel 9, 1 and 2, we have short verses. The second person will take chapter 10, 17 to 26. Anybody can read for us. First Samuel 9, 1 to 2, then 10, 17 to 26. Thank you, man. Now there was a man of Benjamin, whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Bekorath, the son of Apia, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. Two, and he had a son, whose name was Saul, a choice young man, and a good and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. God bless you, man. Now, chapter 10, 17 to 26. Seventeen. And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to meet there. Eighteen. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of Egyptian and out of the hand of all kingdom and of them that I oppress you. 19. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversity and your tribulation. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set the king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribe and by your thousands. 20. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. 21. When he had called the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their family, the families of Matthew was taken, and Saul the son of Kish was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. 22. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further, if the man should yet come thither, and the Lord answered, Behold, he had healed himself among the stuff. 23. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulder and upward. 24. 
And Samuel said to, said to all the people, See ye him whom the Lord has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. 25. Then Samuel told the, the people the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book and laid it, laid it all before the Lord. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. 26. And Saul, Saul, and Saul also went up to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose heart God has touched. 27. That, but, that's, that's all right. Thank you. God bless you for that good reading. The lesson we are, talk, uh, we are learning today is a very important lesson, which um, is good for us. And um, no matter the level of our spirituality, these lessons will still be good for us when we are still here on earth. We are looking at humility and obedience. Now, who can tell me in your own word or in your own exp um, explanation or how you feel you can explain to us what is humility? It could be in a simple word. It could be, you know, giving an example. We want to learn from you. What's humility? It may be big, it may be a very big word for somebody. So we really want to learn from ourselves. If you say humility, what are we talking about? What's humility? Because if we don't understand what is humility, then it means the, we are not going to achieve the objective of this lesson. So when we say humility, what do we mean by humility? Describe it the way you feel is all right. It will be accepted. Thank you. God bless you. So for me, I would say humility. Let me just make an example of this church. I see because I was I was not born in this church. How then I was I was from other denomination to this denomination, which I am now, which I love so much. And I can say I see humility in this church a lot with the pastors. I've been to camp meetings. I've seen the elders. I've seen the pastor of this church, which I belongs. I see a lot of humility in them because in some other churches, organizations, not all which I have seen, I'm not judging. I can say, you can see some pastors serving food for like members of the church. Mm -hmm. Or you can see some pastors sitting beside members of the church. You can see some pastors. In short, go, you can tell in go, them. Go, go, yeah. go. So in this church, as an example, I see a lot of humility within God, the elders, which God, I love God so much. God bless you. Yeah. God bless you. Is that Sister Kea? Thank you. Thank you. That's a very brilliant answer. God bless you. We'll come to that. That's a good one. Thank you very much. I describe humility as seeing oneself as nothing, as being lower than others, not above any other person. Humility is um, accepting that, it, not seeing yourself as anything, before man and before God, not what, feeling like... What if God has made you something? And all thanks to God, but yet okay, it is God's, thank you. God to bless God's glory. You. That's, that's accepted. Thank you, sir. I know we we'll have many answers. Okay. Let's just be brief. Thank you, sir. I would say humility is uh, just be humble. Humble yourself before others. When you humble yourself, you don't take yourself above any other person. You can do the service and do whatever possible to make those other people feel human. God, Thank you. God, God bless you. I'm seeing your hand, Ramoyo. I just wanted to add to, to her contribution that it's yeah. a sincere thing because some people might pretend like they're lowly, they're everything, mm. but it has to come from within. Mm. So it's not having any emphasis or value on self-importance, mm. really. So. Good answers. Yes, sister. God bless you. Humility to me is the act of not being purpose. God bless. What if I dress well, I have live well, eat well, drive well, and do everything? You see, you see me, and does that mean uh, I'm not humble? I just want you to still add more light. Thank you, ma'am. Then Brafo Kola will be the last. I see humility is bringing yourself down to any level you find yourself in, no matter your class, no matter who you are. 
just blending and God, you know. God, God bless you. Yeah, I'll, I'm coming to you, man. To that me, will be the last. To thing. me, humility is putting others first. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's take you, man. Last, sister. Humility is, yes, humility is also recognizing God's grace in your life, in whatever you have achieved, you have achieved, and not allowing those things that you have achieved to use it to suppress others. God bless you. All those answers are very brilliant. If we see humility in that way and behave that way, I think it will be very, very good. You see, may God come and help us. Amen. We are human, and sometimes, you know, this flesh thinks, you know, makes us feel as if we are just more than the way, you know, God has made us. But uh, we are not. We are just the way we are. May God come and help us. Amen. It is only God that can teach us. Yes. Can somebody be... I uh, know. That question will not come yet. Now, what is the opposite of humility? Which none of us will want to have those kind of you know, habits. What is the opposite of humility? Yes, pride. Then what is pride? Yes, ma'am. Just summary. What is good, not doing what God wants us to do. Good. Thank you. God bless you, man. So it means if we are disobedient to the word of God, that's pride. Yeah. Is that true? Yes, indeed. If God says we should do this and we feel that we have our own that is better than God, is that humility? No. That means we are above the word of God. Yes. May God come and help us. Amen. Yes? Any other thing to describe pride or whatever? Yes, sir. Priority, God bless you, sir. Pride is the uh, self-exaltation. Okay. Like what? You, if you say that, nobody will understand. Okay, uh, Give us an example. How do you yes. think? Okay. Uh, self-exaltation in, in the sense that you know, um, putting yourself above others. You know, you try to be what you are not. So you know, you don't want people. To, you know, you might see some set of people, you know, where they are, and because you feel that, oh, you don't belong to their caliber. Like class or whatever, class, this one, not my class, does it still relate to yeah, that? Yeah, 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 right, so, so, you know, it could be class, it could be position, just like the example she gave, mm. you know, a pastor, that, uh, you know, these are members, so as a pastor, I should not sit there, let me, you know, sit on the high table, I should be at the, you know, so. Yeah, it, but they are men of God. If they do that, are they obeying the word of God? I say, members, you go, we were high class, let's sit. Will it, will it complete the word of God? God bless you. May the Lord come and help us. Amen. All of us know Jesus Christ that taught humility, how he behaved when he was on earth. Yeah. Jesus was the humblest person. We knew who he was, and he never showed it. Even when they have beat him and did a lot of things to him, you will never hear from him. Except one time he said, do you know I could call 10,000 of angels? But he did do it. May the Lord come and teach us humility. Amen. Before promotion comes what? Humility. May God come and help us. Now we are looking at obedience. Just in a simple word. What is obedience? And we are talking in terms of God now. What is obedience? Yes, ma'am. God bless you, Sister Funkema. Do what you have been told to do. That's it. So if God, if we have 99.9, .9, is that obedience? So it means that if we are still have, if we have 99.9 .9 in whatever God asks us to do, and it's remaining that little part, it means it's not complete. And all result to what? Disobedience. Is that correct? If you have 99.9, .9, you will tell God you have obeyed. I don't want us to go into the Bible. We already know what happens, is especially even this lesson we are talking about, but I don't want us to go too far. So if you have 99.9 .9 and you tell God, I have done everything you have done, just this part I have not done. Is that obedience? No. no. God wants absolute 100%. Except you cannot hear God again say, all what you have done, that is all right. Then we know you have scored 100% in obedience. But as long as the conscience or our heart, the Spirit of God is still telling you or me that, why not do, God said this, why are you still resenting? 
Why are you not obeying the word of God? Why are you not trying your best? You hear the word of God every time, but you don't want to do it. It means there is still something underneath. When our heart does not condemn us, then we have peace with God. Is that correct? That's what the Bible says. Our heart should not be condemning us towards the word of God. May the Lord come and help us. Amen. Give example of people who were pride, proud in the Bible and people who were humble. Yeah, before we go that deep down. Just give me some example of people who you thought were pr- proud and you saw they, they were resolved for it. Yes, one. Nebuchadnezzar. What happened? Exalting himself. Thank you. Everything about God. Yeah, he built and the rest. God bless you. May God not allow us to be like that. One person more. Yes, ma. God bless you. King Herod. King Herod. What happened to him? When he was telling the children of Israel that who is that God that will deliver that will deliver you from my hand? Yeah, okay. King Pharaoh. King King Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Because I know King Herod too. So, so there are many things that happen in the Bible that God didn't like. God don't want us to exalt ourselves in any way. You and your brother are the same. God might have given you opportunity over him or her. Does that make you above another person? Not at all. I can't say I'm better than you. That's already, saying that is already, will God be happy? God won't be happy. May God come and help us. Even when we have done everything and people are praising us, do now allow the praise to, you know, to resort to where God will now bring us down. Many examples in the Bible. Right. Haman was it. We remember many, many things. So if God does not promote us, we shouldn't put ourselves where God has not led us. It will never be fine. That's the core of this lesson. In fact, this lesson to the end of, even this lesson we are learning, including the subject matter of this lesson, if we look at it all through, it's not a palatable lesson at all. Nobody will ever want to serve God, and God will now cast the person out. Pride is, God said he look at somebody who is proud afar off. That means we should never allow anything to be anything pride to come to us. Immediately it's coming into our heart and we discover it. What should we do? Do we mean as we are born we'll never be proud? Has anybody never been proud before? Please. We can celebrate you if I've never been proud before. We can thank you for that. It is human nature the way God has created us. We remember what happened in the Garden of Eden. But as we see ourselves and we discover it quickly, we go on and we ask God, please help me. Let me just know the way I am, I'm all right. I don't want to be above. May God come and help us in Jesus' name. So before this time, right, the children of Israel has been ruled by different people. They were ruled by who? The judges. Right. Who? Prophets. Who? One of them was also who? Samuel. That's it. Remember Samuel? Was a little boy, displayed humility. He was there in the house of Eli to God, you know, help him and became a, a, both a judge and a prophet in Israel. This time around, he's now growing old. And of course, when you know that different government, there, there's bound to be changes. And now that he's old, and what were the nature of his family? Yeah. It was mentioned in the lesson, so we still want to bring it out as well. Where his son, what were they? Were they to were they obeying his footsteps? Yeah, were, did they obey his footsteps? They were not following their father to do to serve God. And the children of Israel, look at it. Two things. Is old, can he lead us? His children are not doing well. Yeah. The elders quickly rally around and say, please, please, let's have some meeting or a meeting and uh, 
let's quickly, you know, go to him and we we'll make a demand. May God come and help us. Amen. Whenever we are in the house of God, as long as God has not said anything that has to do with God, if God has not said, what should we do? You've not heard that God has said, and has God has given you categorically that this is it. And even if God is going to tell you, there is going to always be somebody in charge. Right. So now what do they do? They already have a leader, but they now have to have a meeting, and they approach the leader for what? Which was a very, very serious, the beginning of the problem. Yes, Sister Esther. They said they wanted a king. Like yeah, you are nations. correct. God bless you. Where do you think that thought is coming from? Let's be very, you know, let's do justice to this lesson. I want us to bring the answer out. It's going to help me. It's going to help you. But if you know the answer, you are not going to say it. Then we are going to hide the lesson. So now, where do you think this thought is coming from? Is it from God or from personal, or from personal interest or, you know? Say it the way it is. Yes? Is it kind of spiritual? Yes, ma. It's coming from their mind. It's personal. Because if they have thought of what God has been doing for them, since they left the Egypt, they will know that their God is still there for them. But instead, they've forgotten and said, oh, they need a king now. If forgotten the God they are serving. God bless you, ma. God bless you for that answer. Has even God, has God forsaken Samuel at this time? They have to move in. They have to say, you have to take action now. And now, him among many, what is he going to do? May God help us. Amen. If we are in the house of God, let us know our what? Boundaries. So that we don't cause problems for ourselves we don't call problem for the next generation. Remember, anything that has to do with the house of God is not a political affair. So the way you see it may not be the way it is. God bless you. Sir, if you have anything, please tell I think, us. I think also the environment they found themselves. They found other people. They were looking outside their, their, their tribe. The people around, they had kings, and they, they wanted to emulate or copy the people mm. when it's not God's way for them. Mm. So what lesson do we learn from that? Yes, um, ma'am. Yes, bra. So, yeah, I actually I, wanted to say what bra, um, Adoga has said, but the lesson I'm learning from here is today we may not see things like that happening to us vividly just the way it has happened to mm. the children of Israel. But as Christians, mm. what is meant for A may not be meant for B. Mm. And what God has given um, Sister A or Sister B mm. may not be what God wants to give to me. Mm. So I should be able to pray and ask God for leadership and guidance and his blessing mm. based on what I want and not be envious or be jealous of what other people want. And I want to have it by all means. So God does not want us to act and behave like that as Christians. God bless you. Is that a good lesson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think he has already mentioned one of the points I wanted to make. The second is, you know, uh, the, the scripture says, Ye are epistles known and read of all men. The sons of Samuel, even if the children of Israel, for example, were not in right standing, mm. they knew that the sons of Samuel were not standing right. Mm. Today in our world, you know, we see unbelievers out there. Sometimes when you do what is wrong, mm. they will tell you, ah, but you say you are a Christian. Mm. So we need to be careful. Yeah. People are watching us. Yeah. It might, sometimes it might not only be within the church. Even out there in your place of work, in your school, there are some moves that you will make and people will say, ah, I thought you said you were a Christian. May, may God help us. May God come and help us. So I've also learned lesson from that last answer. It means because of Christ's sake, I will allow many things to go. You might have something, you know, that you want to justify, but because of, they will not name the name of Christ, and the name, I will just allow things to go, to allow Christ to reign. May God come and help us. Was Samuel happy? Happy, oh, thank you, you are doing the will of God. Now you want some king to rule over you. Was he happy? Was he happy? Who knows? 
He wasn't happy. What will he do? That's like permissive will of God. And he already even went ahead to tell them, if you are going to go by this, look at what is going to happen. Did the people listen? They still went ahead and said, Sir, we want this to be done. May God come and help us. Amen. Permissive will of God sometimes may, may not be the best will of God for us. But may God come and help us Amen. at every point in time that we may be able to know what is the actual will of God over our life. Mm. And um, when they did that, God told him straight away that they've rejected him and they have also rejected who? God. That means God said, I'm going to give you whatever you want, but my hand is not in it. That's not a good one for us. We want God at all times to follow us, guide us in whatever we are doing, so that uh, we may be able to get all the blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. So we mentioned that. Then, so what the, of the tribe of who? Who knows? Just mention. Thank you. How, what is his uh, physique? How is it? Is it small or is tall? Good. And his father's name was who? God bless you. We've already lessened. And uh, what, what was the nature of Saul when he, was, when he was called? Was he humble or proud? Very humble. Remember, I want us to take a lesson from this. As we mentioned the other time, in God's business, his leaders are chosen by God. Yes. That's just the answer. You would think, oh, because he was called, because he was somebody ordained him, Look beyond that. If God doesn't want anybody to be there to leave his people, he knows what to do. So whichever way the person gets there, if it's in the affairs of God, leave it in the hands of God. That's the will of God for that time. I'm just telling you. We can all read this lesson and understand. God made that ass to get missing. Do you know that? Who caused the ass to get missing? And he was looking for it for three days. And he was even with the servant and the father and said, oh, we have a seer. Let's go and see him. What was the purpose of God? Was it the missing ass that God wanted to achieve? Or he wanted to make somebody king? Who knows? He wanted to make it somebody king. And there and there, he will get to where he was going to be anointed. You see, the game of God, that's why if you look at, uh, I think some of the lessons that were attached to this lesson for some of us who go to the internet, some of the old Sunday school, he said, God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confirm those things that are mighty. We should never imagine the kind of God we have. He's not this kind of brain. He's a spiritual planner. So you just fit into this plan. That's all. Because if you want to understand God, you cannot. Look at how Saul came about. If they have not told us, and the, the, you know, the prophet has not said, and give prophecy, we wouldn't have known. We just see Saul coming up. You don't know, know that that is how God prepared him for that position. May God come and help us. Um, we've mentioned some of the things. Yeah, we've mentioned the livestock and the rest. And you see, the attitude of Saul, apart from humility and obedience, he was also what um, diligent. You know, when the father called him to look for it, did he just look for it and say, oh, I didn't find it. He has tried the best. Did he go ahead to make sure, you know, they get the answer? And did he get blessing from that? That's a lesson for us. May God come and help us. Amen. Mm. Yes, Saul was anointed. We said he was humble. He never won't even followed, you know. Uh, travel with Samuel to the coronation, we know. He was hiding himself. Okay? And uh, that's what the lesson also is saying to, to Ross. Saul didn't perform, you know, didn't, you know, didn't make any judgment, you know, concerning things that have passed. He had the mind of God as well. Um, yeah. Now, if we look at how God, we have just mentioned that, how God made his, you know, appointment in the, in the, in the, in the, in the church of God is different to the political. See, if somebody has a political sense, 
If you can't survive in the spirit. Is that correct? Because everything you just want to, you don't want to look at it in the physical sense. No. God is too, is too mighty, is too wise than we who are just there to just understand him. The only thing we should be begging God, please, help me to fit into your plan. Do you know that as all of us are here today, God has already known from our day one that you'll be seated here. Do you know that? That's, it's too perfect. God is too great. He's too mighty. Somebody who created the whole world and created you, I mean, in billions. So we just a human being, one person, is just too insignificant to his work. So may God come and help us. Amen. I want to say that if we humble ourselves, we will too much understand God. Very easy to understand God. But you have to obey. Obedience is very, very key. If not, we will not know the nature of God. If God says sit down, just sit down. If he says sit down, if you are thinking he's going to ask you to sit down for five minutes, it may be more. Just wait. When God wants you to stand up, he may be testing you, he will ask you to stand up. And you will follow the blessing of that amount of time you have sat. You see how it is? Patience, obedience, humility, all goes hand in hand. And when you are speaking with God, because you are obedient like Moses, like all of them, will God respond to you? If there's a way God wants to discuss things to you, he will make you understand things around you. Because two of you are working together, and God knows that you are never disobedient. You have always been obedient to him. He can reveal his mind. No wonder the prophets, see how they work mightily. How somebody went to mountain and collect commandment. Speak the mind of, the peop- of God to the people because they were knitted. They were closely united with God. That is what God wants us to do. But I want to tell us that we can't do all this with just physical body. What are the things that will help us to do that? You want to know God. You want to be very close to God. You want to be a friend of God. Sometimes I do tell, you know, some of people that are close to me, many of the things around me, I say, God normally, God will tell me. Because if I don't know what to do, I will just mix road. I will wait until you say, God, what is the green light? Yeah, if I cannot, if you want me to bury, yes, I will be there. But you are God. We keep telling God, please. What is the answer? What do you want us to do? Where do you want me to be? And I tell you, in a moment of time, God will respond. God speaks. He's a living God. He's not a dead God at all. You know, the other way people have displayed God and they make God, no, no, no. God is very real. And we thank God for this church, as they have said. Humility makes it all. All of us are one. No high no low. If anybody is going high and you are no, you know, that is not the standard. The standard is all across board. You go to any part of the world, all of us are the same. May God come and help us. Amen. What do you think? In two minutes, we help us. These things are too high for us. What are the things you feel is going to help us? To be able to be humble, to be able to be obedient, to be able to know this God. Just list some of them. Where are we starting from? God bless you, man. What is the first starting point? Yeah, salvation means you are obedient to God. You say, I shouldn't do this. I am no more doing it. That's the first point. 100%. You move ahead again. What are the things we need to do that will help us? Yes, sir. That mic for Brock here. Daily consecration, oh. drawing closer to God every day, trying oh. to understand and know His will, perfect will for us. Because sometimes we might get the answer mm. and it's His permissive will. That's we it. end up getting our fingers burnt. Oh. May God come and help us. Amen. Consecration, prayers, reading the Word of God yeah. is very, very important. What are other things do we need to do? Yes. Displaying humility or whatever. Yes, ma. God bless as you. We are praying. We must listen to the voice of God. So it means God speaks. As yes. Well. God speaks. I want to tell us today God speaks. Yes. If anybody has not heard the voice of God, wait and say, God, speak to me. I tell you, God will speak to you. You will know He's speaking. 
He used many things. May God come and help us. Amen. Well, that is the little we can do. I thank everybody for doing justice to the lesson. May God come and teach us the more Amen. and help us to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So that's the end of our lesson. We go on our knees to pray while we wait for um, the devotional service. God bless us. Amen. Oh, God.